Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. This is Janeline Palma, your Certified Scrum Master. In this lesson, you will learn all about Scrum events. So let's start! Do you have any idea what are the four formal events for inspection and adaptation? Before we proceed to the four formal events, let's talk about first the sprint. So as you can see in the image, the sprint is located at the center. Do you know the reason why? Because the sprint is a container for all other events. As you can see around the sprint, we have first is the sprint planning. The second one is the daily scrum. And then the third one is the sprint review. And then the last one is the sprint retrospective. Later on, I will talk about each event. But now let's talk about first about the sprint. So sprints are the heartbeat of Scrum where ideas are turned into value. Sample, you have ideas of features you want to be included in the app. And then in the span of two weeks sprint, your idea will turn into a usable product. So that's how the sprint works. Do you have any idea how long is the duration of the sprint? The sprint duration is a fixed length, meaning it should be consistent. If you're using a two-week sprint, you should use same duration on the succeeding sprint. Sprint duration should be one month or less, but usually we use a two-week sprint. So every two weeks, we have a new sprint. For example, for month of March, first and second week is the sprint one, and then the third and fourth week will be the sprint two. A new sprint starts immediately after the conclusion of the previous sprint. So there's no vacant day after the end of the sprint. You will start right away for your next sprint. So if Friday is the last day of sprint one, then on Monday, you will start your sprint two. On the next slide, I will talk about what happens during the sprint. So during the sprint, first, no changes are made that would endanger the sprint goal. For example, we have a two-week sprint. Since we can't avoid sudden changes during the sprint, the team can still accept changes within the first week of the sprint since it's still the development days of the team. The team can still adjust to the changes and as long as the user story to be trade off have the same value. Number two, quality does not decrease. The team should be consistent in delivering their tasks on time and with quality. Sample, before the devs transfer the user story to the QAs, they perform unit testing first to ensure that the user story is already ready for testing. And then the third one is the product backlog is refined as needed. We have sprint refinement during the sprint in preparation for the next sprint. Number four, the scope may be clarified and renegotiated with the product owner as more is learned. Sample, during development days, devs and QAs notice a different scenario that has not been addressed or included during the sprint refinement. So during the sprint, scope may be clarified and renegotiated with the product owner if the additional changes will be included on the current sprint or will be added on the next sprint if changes is big. And then sprint could be canceled if the sprint goal becomes obsolete. So if you will ask me if it is possible, my answer is yes, it really happens. I already experienced this in my previous project. The two-week sprint got canceled. The reason is changes of priority. So the whole sprint is affected. Who do you think has the authority to cancel the sprint? Is it the PO, the Scrum Master, or the developers? The correct answer is the PO. Only the product owner has the authority to cancel the sprint. Now that you already know the container for all other events, the sprint, let's now proceed to the first formal events for inspection and adaptation, the sprint planning. This is the visual presentation for the sprint planning. 
first, let's talk about the inputs. We have the product backlog. So what is a product backlog? Product backlog is an ordered list of features to improve the product. Then the second is the latest increment. These are the user stories you will be working on for the entire sprint. And then the third is the velocity, capacity of the development team. So this should be identified during the sprint planning. What is the velocity, capacity of the team for the entire sprint? Here you have to consider the holidays and leaves of the developer, developers so that the velocity and the capacity of the team for the sprint is more accurate. So now that we have the inputs, in sprint planning, the aim is to essentially answer two questions. The first question is what will be delivered in the sprint? During the sprint planning, the team should identify what are the priority features, user stories to be included in the sprint. Then the next question is, how will we do it? The team should discuss the user story acceptance criteria, the scope and the limitation, and how they will meet the definition of that. And then for the outputs, we have the sprint goal. What is sprint goal? Do you have any idea? So the sprint goal is the single objective for the sprint. Sample of sprint goal is like this. To complete the development and testing of the following feature. Then the other output is the sprint backlog. So sprint backlog is composed of the sprint goal. These are the user stories selected from the product backlog. Sprint planning is time boxed to a maximum of eight hours for a one-month sprint. For shorter sprints, the event is usually shorter. That's all for sprint planning. Now let's proceed to the daily scrum. So this is the daily scrum. What do you think the purpose of the daily scrum? The purpose of the daily scrum is to inspect progress towards the sprint goal and adopt the sprint backlog as necessary. The time box for the daily scrum is 15 minutes. Who are the required attendees in the daily scrum? The required attendees are the developers, but Scrum Master and PO can join the DSM so, they, so that they are aware on the progress of the team. And then how? How the team give their updates? For the updates, you can use the yesterday, today, and blocker. Work done yesterday, work to be done today, and mention if you have any impediments or blocker. And then the fourth one, where is the DSM take place? To reduce the complexity, it is held at the same time and same place every day. So that's all for the daily scrum. Let's now move to the next formal event sprint review. Before I discuss the third formal event, sprint review, I just want to ask you if a sprint review is the same with sprint demo. So what do you think the answer? Is it a yes or a no? So the correct answer is no. A sprint review and sprint demo is different. Sprint demo is only a part of sprint review. Sprint review is much more than just a demo. So let's now talk about the sprint review. First, let's answer the question what. What do you think the purpose of the sprint review? So the purpose of the sprint review is to inspect the outcome of the sprint and determine future adaptations. Next question, who? So... Who are the required people need to attend the sprint review? The, the answer is the product owner, the scrum master, the team, which is the developers, and lastly, the stakeholders. And then the next question is how? How sprint review presented to the stakeholders? So as you can see in the image, the scrum team presents the result of their work to key stakeholders and progress toward the product goal is discussed. 
So the team will discuss the overall goal and sub-goal of the sprint, the committed versus the completed user stories, issues and challenges of the team, the highlights of the sprint, and lastly, demo the done functionalities. And then after that, based on the feedback of the stakeholders, the team will now update the product backlog and then collaborate to the stakeholders on what to do next. So the product backlog may also be adjusted to meet new opportunities. And then next sprint planning date will start right away after the end of the sprint. For example, if it is the last day of the sprint, the next sprint planning will be on Monday. Time box for a sprint review is a maximum of four hours for a one-month sprint. For shorter sprints, the event is usually shorter. And then, let's now proceed to the last for formal event is the sprint retrospective. So let's answer the what question. So what do you think the purpose of sprint retrospective? So the purpose of the sprint retrospective is to plan ways to increase the quality and effectiveness of the team. Next question is who? Who are the required people to attend the sprint retro? The answer is the scrum team, the PO, the scrum master, and the developers. Next question is how? How the team do the sprint retro? So the scrum team inspect how the last sprint went with regards to individuals, interactions, processes, tools, and their definition of them. So there are different templates you can use in Sprint Retro. Sample is the four L's, sailboat, start, stop, continue, and so on. So the Scrum team discusses what went well during the sprint, what problems it encountered, and how those problems were or were not solved. Time box for sprint retro is a maximum of three hours for a one-month sprint. For shorter sprints, the event is usually shorter. For two-week sprint, we do a one-hour retro. And then, Scrum event. So now let's wrap up. The four formal events within the sprint to inspect and adopt are the following. First is the sprint planning, second is the daily scrum, third is the sprint review, and lastly, the sprint retrospective. So that's all for this lesson. I hope you've learned something. Thank you. Shout out to Princess Manlangit and Jackie Directo for sharing my YouTube channel. And to all who subscribe to my channel, thank you so much. If you have any questions or topic you want me to discuss, just comment down below. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you on my next video. Bye!